you end up making the squad and, and then how did your career progress from there? Uh, yeah, so I think we had at the summer of, or well, the summer like program of 2015 into 2016. Um, and then I progressed to playing uh, one game as an exhibition game for Melbourne uh, against the Bulldogs earlier on in that year. Um, and then missed out on selection for the next game. Um, but, yeah, just had a really good BFL season and um, it was draft year come the end of 2016. So um, going into that, I thought I'd done everything that I could to get drafted. And then, yeah, obviously missed out on the draft, but I uh, was lucky enough to be picked up by the Crows as a free agent. And, yeah, the rest is kind of history. Uh, the yep. free agency period in the women's draft is just, I think it's a couple, maybe a week post the draft. Um Obviously, for those that don't know, it's a state-based draft. So um, that year I nominated to be drafted in Melbourne and I missed out on a spot there. How do you go about getting back on board, like you said, and, and staying motivated and, and getting better? Uh, I mean, it has its challenges, um, depending on what you're going through. But um, I don't know, Beck's, Beck Goddard's advice to me was the sun comes up tomorrow. So, um, you know, when I missed out on the draft in, in 2019, uh, she messaged to check in and then just said, oh, the sun comes up tomorrow when we start again. So, um, yeah, I guess it's just about refocusing and maybe rethinking about the goals that you have. And, yeah, just rem- remembering that, yeah, like it's not the be all and end all if you do get drafted or if you don't get redrafted or, you know, obviously you want to get back from injuries. Um, but, yeah, like just remembering that tomorrow is a new day and you start fresh and um, you never know what's going to come your way. So if I had given up, probably would have never had the chance to be a train-on player with Melbourne and, um yeah, like I said, I'm grateful for that experience because it helped me be a bit more resilient um, in getting back to, to where I wanted to be. Is the workload um, similar or is it bigger? Take us through what the what the schedule looks like now. Um, yeah, well, the schedule's pretty much the same. We're still three days three days of training a week plus um, two days of gym uh, on our off days. Our hours that we're allowed to be at the club have extended a little bit, which is obviously – um, handy because it means that we can be better footballers. Um, and, but I guess the, the biggest change that I've seen over the last five years is how talented all the, the young girls coming through are that, um, unlike me stepping out as an 18 year old, I, I hadn't played against women before where the girls are coming through with all the pathways from Oz kick right up to senior footy that, yeah, their skill levels are elite and the game obviously just keeps getting faster. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of talented girls out there who are still yet to come through. So. Um, yeah, I guess just how talented all the girls coming through are is the biggest change that I've seen. You mentioned the, the off-feet conditioning. For those that um, haven't heard of that term before, um, what is it and, and what, why do you do it? Like in what part of your game are you trying to improve by, by doing off-feet conditioning? Uh, yeah, so off-legs conditioning is, I guess, um, like a, a bike, a ski erg, a grinder, a rower um, in the pool just with my arms. So um, I personally do it just to try and um, build a bit of a bit of extra fitness um, over the preseason. So um, yeah, obviously just to try and help you know, with my fitness level and my endurance, and just so that I can obviously recover and not, I'm not smashing my body too much. So I'm trying to take a load off um, by obviously not running or, or being in the gym at the full time. But um, yeah, I'm pretty lucky. We have a, a heat room up on up on the Gold Coast, so I spend a lot of time in there and. Yeah, always jump in the pool wherever I can, obviously, for that bit of extra recovery, but also like swimming. So, yeah, it's a good way to get keep my fitness up. So on the topic of recovery, what, what have been some of your favourite ways to recover straight after a game or, or the or the day after a game? Um, uh, a bit of a weird one. I, I don't mind the old, old ice bath um, or, yeah, jumping and walking a couple of laps in the pool. So they're probably two that work for me or um, straight after the game I'm probably – um, just chucking ice bags on any sore niggles and stuff that I have. And, um, yeah, always make sure I try and get a really good sleep. So, um, yeah, obviously sleep's probably one of the most important things that you can have in terms of recovery. But outside of that, it's the standard ice baths, walking in the pool or just ice packs, whatever I've got access to. Yeah. 